When I had my stroke, my mini stroke, TIA, it was in uh, two years ago. I'm 82 now, and uh, I was, that was my 80th birthday present. I had a horrible headache and uh, ended up with um, sort of sloppy speech. I hadn't noticed my foot dragging and uh, I just felt so tired. I felt like all my insides had been taken out of me. We went to the hospital and I had very high blood pressure. It was uh, 233 over 133. And Dr. Swartz came in and he said, no one can have that without having a massive heart attack or a massive stroke. They sent me for an MRI, and it proved that I had had a stroke. But I was very, very fortunate that it was a TIA and wasn't a regular massive stroke. People who've had a small or silent stroke are at a much higher risk of future stroke. And exercise has this wonderful benefit of reducing risk factors. Dr. Swartz asked me if I would be willing to go to the rehab center. And then we're going to hit start. Okay. okay. So we're using exercise not only to recover from stroke, but in this particular group, our interest is in reducing the likelihood of a future stroke. Well, unlike, say, a drug therapy that might require a lot of regulatory approval, exercise is something that we could institute fairly quickly into a patient population if we find that it's really valuable. You can begin exercise with the appropriate safety precautions as short as two weeks after the stroke. I went once a week and they suggested at first that I do half a mile in a certain time. And uh, then after a while they raised it a little more. I got so I did a mile in I think it was 22 minutes walking. Nicely done. Well, thank you, Helen. That was a very good day. First of all, exercise in its most conventional sense does improve um, heart and lungs, and that's really what everybody is familiar with. I think the thing that's most exciting over the last few years has been the evidence that exercise not only helps muscles and bones and heart and lungs, but directly benefits brain health. There's quite good evidence that exercise can improve cognitive function. It seems to also improve stroke recovery in terms of sensory motor impairments. So one of the important measures we take after someone's had a stroke are measures about balance. And balance control is one of these very important things that determines your ability to walk. And after stroke, it's not uncommon for people to have to favor one side or another, so we attempt to retrain that. And one of the ways we train it are, are tools like this, which is a biofeedback device. And then we go on on down to very cellular and molecular laboratory models where we actually look in the brain and see what's being changed by exercise. We've been particularly interested in brain-derived neurotrophic factor because it plays a role in the brain trying to heal itself or fix itself. Well, interestingly, one of the things that exercise does is that it increases levels of brain-derived neurotrophic factor. What we're trying to figure out in our research is what's really the appropriate dose and intensity? Um, what are the appropriate modalities to retrain? So if someone has difficulty walking, do they get the same benefit if they're doing recumbent biking? So we're going to walk like you're walking a tightrope, one foot in front of the other. But remember, we don't want your feet to actually touch one another. It is one thing to help facilitate healthy people to exercise, but it's much more difficult sometimes for people who've had a stroke to find ways to engage in physical activity where they get the benefits. So an important part of the research we're involved in is not just about improving biology and risk factors, it's finding ways to reduce the barriers to people who've had a stroke to be more active. Well done. <laughs> it's still early days and uh, you know we're nowhere near uh, to the level of improvement that I think we can get to. And if we can understand what the mechanisms are, then we might be able to optimally uh, design better exercise programs to improve stroke recovery. As exercise is one of the most important modifiable risk factors that we have that can help maximize recovery after stroke. It's the magical pill that, that we all know about, and yet personally maybe don't take advantage of that quote-unquote medication. I think people don't realize the benefit that they can get after a stroke by following this rehab program. It's not difficult. 
And if you find it difficult, your leader will slow you down or put you on something different. You know, if you want to do something for yourself that's in your control with the barriers sort of knocked down around you, this is something you can do. This is something that would be extremely beneficial to you.